Hello and welcome. I'm Carmen Olson. I'm going to do a short Excel tutorial with you today. Today's topic is budgeting. The problem we're trying to solve is how much did we spend in each category over the course of a month given a list of transactions. It's going to be a combination of Excel skills and business concepts. We're really going to focus on the VLOOKUP function today. The business concepts we're going to learn, we're going to learn about budget codes, expense categories, and how to mine data for insight. Here's some tips about this tutorial. I recommend that you follow along at home with Excel using your downloaded copy of the spreadsheet. I always advise that you set up your monitor so that the video is in one window and Excel is in a different window so you can see them both side by side. That way you can pause the video often while you work on building your own model. This allows you to go at your own pace and review any sections in case you get stuck. Let's get started. So let's start by taking a look at the data. In the red section, we've got a list of transactions. Each transaction has a date, a description, and an amount. So this is the data, how it would look if you were to copy and paste it from your um, credit card statement or your online banking. So even though this example is about personal expenses, it can be applicable to business as well. So we've got, you know, for example, our rent check, $650, how much we spent on rent, and then we've got our internet bill, we've got a couple of coffee shop transactions, we went to a bookstore, we bought a concert ticket, bought some groceries, ate out at a restaurant, paid for our gym pass, did some laundry, another coffee shop transaction, etc., etc. These transactions are our paychecks. That's when the money's coming into our bank account. This is the money that's going out of our bank account. So if we sum up all of these transactions, we can see the total amount that we spent in a month. Again, if we sum up our paychecks, we can see the total amount that we earned in a month. So that'll help us figure out how much we're saving each month. This function simply counts the number of transactions, so we can see how many transactions we're doing a month. Now every time we have a transaction, we've typed a code. We've gotten the codes from this table over here, which lists 18 categories of transactions along with their descriptions. So every time we pay rent, we put a 1. Every time we pay our internet bill, we type a 2. Our cell phone bill is a 3, groceries is 4, etc, etc, etc. So every month we go through and we manually type these numbers in so that we're coding our transaction based on the expense category. Now let's say we've got quite a lot of transactions and it's a long list and we actually want for easy reference, the name of the category to show up next to the code. We know that one is rent because we can find it in this table, so let's type rent into this cell right here. We know that two is internet because again we can find it in the table, so let's type internet into this cell right here. Five, those are both lattes, so we're going to type our lattes twice into these two cells. 18, we need to go down, find the 18, go across. That's books. It could also be iTunes, but we know since it says bookstore right here that it's probably books. We got a Soundgarden ticket. That's 16. 16 is entertainment. So we're going to go here. Then we've got, oh, we did that wrong. We're going to put entertainment here. Then we've got number four, which is groceries. We're going to type it here. But as you can see, it's getting to be quite tedious to go through the list, typing everything in. You can even see um, its possibility for human error, as I just demonstrated. So there's got to be an easier, better, more efficient, and more accurate way. Excel has a function called the VLOOKUP function. The VLOOKUP function will actually look for these numbers in a table and report the value in a different column in that table. Sounds like magic, right? So what I'm going to do before we even try and use the VLOOKUP function is I'm going to select this entire table and I am going to change the borders so that they are bright red and that they are dashed so that the table is very, very clearly labeled. There we've got. We've got our table bright red dash borders. You don't have to do this every time you do the function. This is just for teaching purposes. So it's really, really clear where the table is located. Another thing that's helpful before we learn the function, each column 
has a number. The first column is called column 1, so I'm actually going to type a 1 at the top of the table. The second column is column 2. I'm going to type a 2. This is called the column index number. And I'm going to color these bright yellow just so that they're very, very visible. Now, you might think this sounds really, really simple that there's column 1 and column 2, but column index numbers actually trip a lot of people up when they're trying to learn the VLOOKUP function. So get really clear where's column 1, where's column 2. If it's a bigger table, you might have 5, 6, 7, 8 columns. But get really clear where's your table, where are your column index numbers before you do the function. Then the function will be easy. So I'm going to delete all of this data. We're going to use the function wizard to find the VLOOKUP function. So I'm just going to type it in and press go so that I'm searching for it. I found it in my list, then I'm going to press OK. So it's almost like I'm Googling for the function. I'm searching the library of functions. Once I open it up, it lists the arguments. Now this is a complex function because there's four different arguments. Each argument is going to show up inside of the brackets separated by a comma. The descriptions of the arguments are on the bottom of the function wizard, which is why I always recommend using the function wizard, because you don't actually have to memorize the structure of the arguments. You can look them up every time. So our first argument is a lookup value. This is the value to be found in the first column of the table. So this is the value that we're looking up. So we know that for each transaction, here we're looking up 1, then we're looking up 2, then 5, so I'm going to left click on this cell because we want this cell reference to move down this column as our formula gets propagated. So we're not going to press F4, we're going to leave it as a relative reference. Next is the table array. This is the table in which data is retrieved. Now since we've colored our table with bright red borders, we know exactly where it is. Now I'm going to absolutely press F4. You always want your table to be fixed in place. You want it to be glued in place. You don't want your table moving around anywhere while you're propagating a VLOOKUP function. Next is the column index number. This is the column number from which the matching value should be returned. Now we know that we're looking up the, this number here and we want to return this number. This is going to be the result of the function. So this column has an index number of 2. So I can either cell reference it and press F4 or I can simply type 2. Both ways work. Now the final argument, I'm always going to press false. The difference between true and false is explained at the bottom. If, it's an if we want to find an exact match, it'll be false. If we want to find a close match, it'll be true. That means that sometimes if we put true or if we leave it blank, we might not get accurate information. It might just find something kind of close but not exact. So we always want to put false because we want an exact match. If the data, data that we're looking for does not show up in the table, we want an error message. So we know that that data is not in the table. Then I'm going to press OK. And look, the result is rent. Now I'm going to hover over the bottom right hand corner until I get a plus sign and double click to propagate the formula. And you can see here there's a couple NAs because we're trying to find 100 in this table there is no 100 because the code for the income was not included in the list of expenses. That's perfect. If we had typed in true instead of false or omitted the false and then propagated we would not have gotten an error message. It would have found the closest number to 100 which is 18 and returned books and music which is not accurate. We actually want the error message because we want to know that that's not in the table. So I'm going to put it back to false and repropagate it, and now we've got accurate VLOOKUP. You can spot check to see we're looking up this number in this table, returning column index number 2, and it's false. Again, you can spot check. You can see this propagated, this was fixed, the blue moves with the column, the blue square moves with the column, and the um, table never moved. That's it for VLOOKUP. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye.